Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name is Nehemiah. Today we're going to be looking at this piece of metal, the Mass Drop and Ferrum Forge collaboration, the DAO. This is on loan from the Pass Around group with the other YouTubers. Uh, this is also extremely similar to a knife I've already reviewed. It's the Mass Drop and Ferrum Forge Buck. There are a few differences that I think justify another review, and I'll point out the differences when I get to them. Maybe you haven't watched the review for the Buck. So let's get into it. First thing we want to do is a size comparison. I've got our standbys here, the PM2 from Spyderco, as well as the Para 3. This is a 3.4 inch blade. I do want to get a quick measurement on actual cutting length. Eh, more like 2.8 for the cutting edge and then 3.4 to the shoulder. The other obvious comparison aside from the buck is another mass drop knife and that's the Keen. The Keen is also a 3.4 inch blade but you're getting a lot more cutting edge more like 3.25 in the cutting uh, so that's something to factor in. Uh, let's do a couple other size comparisons just for funsies. We've got a little tiny Spyderco, the Dragonfly, we've got a giant one, the Spyderco Shaman. So this is really a, a medium size knife uh, for sure. I think it's a good EDC size, the 3.3-ish, the this is 3.4, is one of my favorite sizes for EDC. It's small enough to be portable, uh, big enough to get most tasks done. Before we get into the dent, let's do a quick weigh-in here. Clocking in at 3.4 ounces. This is lighter than the Keen. The Keen is over four, it's like 4.2, 4.3, something like that. Um, and about 0.2 ounces lighter than the Buck. The Buck was about 3.6, if I remember correctly. So a little bit lighter than both those options. Uh, so it's got that going for it. All right, let's get into the dent. We've got the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible to talk about. First off in the decent is this blade shape. Now, I'll, I'll put a picture of the, the buck. Maybe this is a good time to compare it because the blade is one of the biggest things that is different. Notice that the swedge is a lot more subdued on the dowel where it's kind of the marquee, unique aspect of the blade on the buck. This is going to you know, reduce a lot of the weight on the blade. There's pros and cons to this, but I think overall it brings it more in line with a normal just modified sheep's foot. Uh, and the swedge is a little bit you know, toned down, not quite so crazy. Uh, it does, as far as a practical thing, make it a little bit more slim in the pocket, uh, having that swedge be more in line with the rest of the knife's angles and, and lines. I think this is a pretty effective you know, tool. It, it's got enough of a slope here that you're gonna be able to make those stabbing cuts. It's something in between like a spear point and a modified sheep's foot. If you really look at the profile of the blade, like the tip area, it's actually very similar to what the spear point is gonna give you in terms of actual effective piercing ability, similar amounts of, you know, belly. It's a little bit more flats on the, the keen, uh, but still, I, I think most cuts are gonna be very similar. Uh, the steel is made out of S35 Yen on all these knives that I'm comparing it to, the, the keen and the buck. S35 is great, I think for the price point, I think Mass Drop is really getting a good mix of quality for the price on the steel type. No complaints at these price points. This is $140, the Keen is about $150, the Buck is also $140, just for reference. So I like the blade shape, I like the steel, uh, I like that this side is completely clean. We do have a bunch of you know nonsense with the Mass Drop goofy kind of logo on there, but that kind of goes with the territory when you're getting a Mass Drop. The Farron Forge uh, is very gracefully put on the, the backside, uh, very tactful. I, I, I like their, their design. I've been at their, their um, shop, and they're really nice guys over there. Uh, so I think the blade overall uh, deserves its spot in the decent, for sure. Next thing we'll talk about is the jimping, both on the spine of the knife as well as the backspacer. I was really a fan of the jimping on the buck, and this is pretty much making a return. Uh, in fact, when I got this, there was a bunch of human remains here from all the other knife viewers, so I tried to clean that out a bit. Uh, it's definitely 
gripping our our skin uh so there's good evidence of that and it and it sits right exactly where you would want it to in either grip the saber grip or the choked up grip your thumb pretty much wants to go right there i don't think it's really wanting to go this far up uh, and the angle of the knife blade is is really receptive to your thumb just landing right there. On the backspacer, backspacer comes about 50% of the backspacing. Uh, the ridge does not come up, so you cannot see the jimping from the side. It's pretty well sunken in. So as far as like giving your, your hand grip when you're opening the knife, it's not really doing much. I think it's more aesthetic than anything else, but it definitely isn't offensive in any way. So uh, backspacer is nice. It's classy protects you where it needs to uh there's no issue of the the blade coming too close to the back so it's not like it needs to be a full back spacer it's totally competent and i'm totally fine with that for the clip i i'll be talking more about this later but as far as the actual clip itself it's very competent it's got some spring it has a good slope it's chamfered in all the right places uh there's nothing egregious in the ergonomics part of it it's not poking you in no hot spots so I think the actual clip itself deserves its spot in the decent. I'll talk more about some other things that kind of are consideration with it, but we'll, we'll hang on for that. On Mastrop, it says that this is reversible, so I don't exactly know how that plays. I think it's this screw and this hole right here is what's giving you that option to do reversible. I, I guess you take this screw out, flip it over onto this side, take this long screw Flip it over there, I'm imagining. So it doesn't exactly look like it's reversible at first glance, but it actually is, which is kind of cool. One thing I like is there is no lanyard hole, which is awesome. Uh, I'm not a big fan of lanyard holes. I, I've, If it gets done correctly, then I'm not offended if it's there. It's not like I actively want all knives to not have them. Um, it's just, I don't know, something that I'm not into. I know there are people out there that are, are definitely in favor of lanyard hole. You might want to look for the buck on, on this one. Uh, even the Keen does have a lanyard hole, uh, so you might want to look at either of those options if you're really dead set on that. But for me, it's in the decent because I don't like them, and it cleans up the look of the knife. There is a steel insert here with the over-travel stop, so all the niceties of a titanium frame lock flipper are here, uh, which is really impressive for the price that this knife you know, is coming in at. Having these kind of features are not something that's a given. Stuff like the Spidey Chef. You could have put, you know, uh, LC200N steel insert in there. Um, one of my viewers pointed that out. And I remember thinking that and I never said that. And and just seeing it on something that's so inexpensive as this, you know, maybe maybe it isn't too much to ask for, for knife companies to really do that. Um, I don't think it's something that you absolutely have to have. I think it's not like the knife is going to fail if you don't have a steel insert, but it's also not bad that there's a steel insert. So I'm going to call it out as a positive here. Fit and finish on this thing is pretty good. It's centered, uh, tight tolerances as far as like no gaps or anything like that. Uh, the grind, as far as I can tell, is done correctly it's not uneven i if i actually sharpened this knife i think i would really you know reveal any kind of inconsistencies there just because you know that stuff kind of becomes evident when you're starting to mirror polish an edge but obviously i'm not going to do that on the pass around knife as far as i can tell it's pretty good though so no complaints in the fit and finish department i think they did a pretty good job the anna work is good uh all the milling is good as far as like imperfections are concerned i didn't couldn't find any last thing we'll do in the de decent is the ocd the open the close the disengage and i'm putting it in the decent because none of it is like blowing my mind in terms of action goes uh maybe one uh, one of those aspects could could get it there, but I think overall the experience is definitely decent, above average, let's say. So let's get through it. So you've got the open, you have the opening aperture, which is a very good experience. I think this part alone, you know, puts it in the decent section just from the opening. The detent is pretty strong, but not too strong. There's a little bit of a shelf. It kind of flares out a little bit here on the opening aperture. So it's really easy for you to get the meat of your finger into that and have the, the horsepower to whip it out. And it's very snappy. It's, you know, acoustically pleasing. 100% uh, deployment. Haven't had a single issue with the opening aperture. 
There's some negatives uh, with the flipper tab that I'll save for the nitpicks, but overall, you know, we could just imagine that this didn't have a flipper tab, like a, you know, like a Spyderco. I'm not, I'm not taking any points off for it not having a flipper tab in addition to the opening aperture. So if they can get that down uh, as well as they have, then overall that, that earns its spot in the decent. For the disengage, it's that steel insert is very minimal lock stick uh it's pretty quick and easy to get in there uh ample grooves here so it's easy to come in both vertically or horizontally to get in there and get some purchase on that it's kind of a nice big uh wide angle uh chamfer on the inside here so it's very easy to get in there it's not pinching you it's not poking you very easy to disengage the D10 ball gets onto the tang of the blade pretty quickly. Uh, there's a very small little click there, but the placement of the D10 ball means that as soon as you start that action, the D10 ball gets on the tang of the blade pretty much right away. Uh, so not an issue. I don't think it, it needs like, you know, crazy intention in, in, in terms of like a D10 ball ramp or anything like that. Whatever they've done here it works really well. On the close, this is not it's not bad at all i think the buck was much better i was really high in the clothes on that a lot of that had to do with this extra hump on the swedge of the buck just added a lot more mass especially far away from the pivot so you had a lot of like just you know leverage kind of weight wise pulling the blade down here you don't have that much weight and so it, it's a couple jostles but it's smooth this is we action you know it's made by we and it, it's a good feeling it it doesn't need to be guillotine shut by any means i'm perfectly happy with this action on the close not as good as the buck not as good as the keen the keen's open is better the detent is more tuned in i'd say disengaging is actually better on the dowel uh, this needed to kind of groove in here a little bit on the keen to give me better access to get into there. So I think both the open and the, the close is better on the, the keen. The disengage is better on the Dow. Um, so there you go, as far as comparisons go. Now let's get into the excellent. I've got two excellent things. I think the ergonomics on this knife are actually good enough to go into the, the excellent. I think the reason I'm, I'm willing to say this I have medium-sized hands, by the way, is that, you know, even on the Sabre grip, I've got some room left over. So I think people with big hands are still going to be pretty comfortable on the Sabre grip. Obviously, having the op option to choke up into the finger choil, I think there's also enough room here that as long as you don't have gigantic sausage fingers, you'll be able to get into the finger choil pretty comfortably. And it just... It, it, it's a solid ergonomic setup. It, it, it's nothing that's like blow me away. It doesn't feel like I'm crawling into a, a, a warm bed or anything. Um, but it's good enough that I, it, it's general enough that I think it's not going to be bad ergonomics for anyone. Uh, it looks a little bit squared off, but it's so thin and narrow that it actually, it's, it's not really prone to any hot spots or poking you anywhere. It's surprisingly good. Uh, next excellent thing I have is the value. I've kind of alluded to this a little bit, but $140 for this, excellent price for what you're getting. You know, all the nice CDs of a modern titanium folder are here. You've got good S35VN steel. You have great action on bearings. You have, you know, a solid titanium frame, steel insert, uh, over travel stop, every, everything that you would expect to be on a, on a good you know, modern folder these days is making an appearance here. And I think it's an excellent price for what you're getting. Now let's move into the nitpicks. First, first thing, I'm not like a huge fan of the machine work. This is their like circuitry kind of pattern that they've got on here. They have a couple of others like a saber type. Uh, they do have just flat titanium. So if, you know, you're really not into this, like I'm not, then it's not that big of a deal because there's options. So to nitpick on a particular choice out of many, so definitely not a terrible thing in the least. Uh, biggest reason I don't like the machine work is not just the aesthetics of it. I mean, it's kind of take it or leave it, your personal preference, but just all the, the room for a crud to get into all these crevices. These are very deeply milled uh, lines here. And so it's, it's gonna be a pain in the neck if you care about keeping all, you know gunk and food or whatever else in these crevices cleaned out it's going to be a little bit of a to-do 
Next nitpick, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, the clip the clip is in the wrong spot, in my opinion. Now, at first, you think, oh, why do they put it here? Maybe, maybe it's to go with the line of the lock bar, kind of an aesthetic choice. But if you really pay attention, it's not actually perfectly parallel to that lock bar line. So I don't... I don't know exactly what the logic is behind having it precisely here. I think it might have something to do with the screws going into the back spacer, and that's where they have room for it, maybe. But I definitely know that it's physically possible to just move the clip to the top of the little convergence point right here. Uh, it's not a deep carry clip to start with, which is okay, but if this was you know, moved all the way up here, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, it just doesn't make sense because you're you're not having to make room for the lanyard hole like you were on the buck. So this is your perfect opportunity to say, hey, you know, this doesn't have the lanyard hole, but you get the benefit of having a deeper carry pocket clip. And I think that's just kind of a, a missed opportunity. Uh, the clip is still fine. It's not like the biggest knife sticking out of your pocket, but it could have been much better than what it ended up being and i don't think it would have been too much of an issue as far as like machine work but i could be wrong i'm not a knife manufacturer or maker in the terrible i've got one thing and and this it was something that i mentioned on the buck in the nitpicks i think it's a little bit more egregious on the dow so i'm i'm promoting it to terrible uh the flipper tab on this knife is comically a joke now this this terrible point I'm making is in the context of it's not your only way to open the knife. So if you just ignore that it's there or imagine that it's only for a finger guard or something, it, the the floor is very high on this problem. Uh, so, it, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But the actual flipper tap itself is bleh. It, it's, I think it's smaller than what was on the buck. It's hard to tell because I don't have the buck with me anymore, but it slopes down, it's extremely small, and just the detent is strong enough that your finger wants to slide off. And there's a lot of very sharp jimping, because I think if this wasn't jimped, it would just be like a non-functioning flipper tab. It, you'd maybe have 50% luck of opening the, the knife with it. And what happens is, you can see on the tip of my finger, it's just been rubbing it raw every time I try to attempt the flipper tab those jimps end up just being worse because it's just scraping skin off of my finger. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a big fan of this flipper tab at all. It's kind of sharp in the pocket. It's a pocket pecker, and I, I think they should just either take it off or completely change the geometry. I know why they're tempted to make it this kind of pointy shape so that it has the grooves of being the finger guard and kind of splitting the difference of both of these crevices, but. You know, if this is flat right here, it's not going to affect the ergonomics that much. I'm not, you know, up here with my finger. It's back here. I want to go into the bottom of this, you know, finger groove. And so I think they could make that finger, uh, the flipper flat, and then I would have a lot more purchase on being able to light switch this thing. As it stands, you cannot do push button at all. You have to do a light switch, and it's very awkward. If you move up, so it's not so painful on the tip of your finger, then it's a lot harder to get the actual you know, action and speed that you need to rocket it out. So you can do it, it's just gonna hurt your finger every time. Again, you have the opening aperture, it's not the end of the world, it's just that aspect, that flipper tab on its own is terrible. All right, let's talk about the conclusion. This is, this is a very similar knife to the buck and I think I'm gonna be able to give it a recommendation. It's basically, do you want, you know, a more normal blade shape compared to the buck? Or, you know, do you want the look without the the lanyard hole? Uh, you know, this is the lightest of the three options. Maybe, you know, weight is a major contributing factor. So I think there's, you know, subtle differences between the buck and the keen that could kind of help you make your decision. I think my, overall my favorite of the three is still going to be the keen, but that doesn't take my recommendation away from the buck or from the Dow. I think they're both competent knives and earn, you know, their, their place as an option for you. I hope this was helpful to you. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.